Welcome to Zoned In Podcast. My name is Fahim. My name is Nelly J. Get zoned in. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's called, it's called For the Culture. So this segment, we want to highlight um, any athlete or any, any person that is promoting the, for the culture in a positive way. Um, as you know, with Black Lives Matter and other movements happening in the States, I would say globally, that you know, it's all about um, promoting our culture in a way where we can all grow, right? Uh, improve, and of course, um, get equal rights. So. I would say for this segment, we want to talk about two topics. The first one would be, um, I would say, the Rock Nation, um, which is huge. You know, Rock Nation, Jay Z's baby, I call it Jay Z's baby. Um, seeing a, a hip hop artist not only become an entrepreneur, but now he's a billionaire. And not only that, he has he's in sports, he's in different um, verticals. But his company, Rock Nation, signed with AC Milan as partnership for all their clothing and endorsements, um, which is kind of dope. Like, I mean, like football, soccer is probably the most popular sport in the world. So having a black brand for the culture signed with one of the top teams in the world and the top sport in the world, I mean, this is a huge impact. So I want to get your thoughts on that, um, your thoughts on Jay-Z and, and Rock Nation and what he's been doing. Um, and any feedback you want to put towards that. So what is that? What is that deal? Um, Rock Nation's responsible for what exactly? Um, so they're okay. doing um, uh, branding for merchandising. So they signed a partnership with AC Milan. So in regards to uh, uh, sales, it's mainly around uh, promoting the brand, uh, merchandising so like i guess ac milan you know they have their brand jersey yeah. all their shoes yeah all, all, all the rock nation logo on it that's um, pretty cool yeah i mean it's yeah. uh i mean for me for me personally my bad for him uh for me personally i think it's super dope like obviously you're seeing a branding guy um i'm expecting to see that logo that rock nation logo on the jerseys and like I mean, one thing that I'll I'll give uh, kudos to Jay Z for is his ability to really um, put his stamp on the culture. Uh, as he's like, he's shifted from music to like, how can I continue to advance like the black agenda and like tap into initiatives that are fruitful and like kind of produce value. So this makes the most sense because as much as there are a lot of black players in the soccer space. Uh, from an ownership standpoint, that's limiting. Um, so I guess he was like, you know what, let me see if I can tackle it from a branding standpoint and just kind of get the name out there. And obviously there's players that are, the majority of the players are familiar with who Jay-Z is. So I think it's a great look. Um, I'm interested to see what that rollout looks like. Uh, very curious. Um, yeah. I would have never envisioned a scenario where jay Z's like, you know what, I'm going to, um, you know, enter a deal um, with a soccer club. So right. um I'll, I'll wait and see. So just to give some background. So uh, Rock Nation, they already had like um, uh, soccer players that they have as, they as clients. Yeah, as clients. They represent uh, uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku. Um, uh, okay. uh, also, um, I think Marcus Rashford also, uh, Man United. So, but... So I'm kind of torn. Here's the reason why. Um, Syria, that, so just a background, I'm, you guys probably know, maybe people don't. So um, Spain, La Liga, one of the, the premier football leagues. Um, then uh, I'd probably say EPL, English Premier League. Uh, then maybe Syria. The Italian League, then League on um, the French League, and then MLS. And mind you, they have also leagues in Brazil and Argentina, also, right? Yeah, all over, yeah. All over. But here's my problem with the Italian League in particular. Um, I think they have a race problem in Italy. Oh, uh, you think they do? No. Yeah. So, so think about this: you have Jay Z. Um, 
black owner of a marketing arm who's now doing a deal with an Italian team, a very prominent Italian team. And Syria, like, I'm not talking just players, like I'm talking, you go to rural player, rural, um, smaller Italian teams, and they have like chance of like guerrilla chance. I'm not talking like 10, 50, I'm just talking to present day. This is still happening. Mm-hmm. You know, like we had, um, uh, um, Lukaku and, uh, what was it there? Um, going to come Chris Smalling um, two black players that play in Syria and they met they were meeting on a Friday and the Italian newspaper had like Black Friday and they had a picture of both of them what? and and the so the club bat, didn't back the players the club backed the paper and was saying well you know what <clears throat> I think you're looking but a bit you're see, you're seeing it the wrong way. You you know you're, you're not looking about it the right way. Um, you have a player. I'm not sure the player's name, but uh, they, he went. They were chanting some kind of racial slur to him, and he ended up scoring a goal ten minutes later. And he went over to the supporters that were chanting this, and he was taunting them after he scored. And his own teammate, when he went back to locker room, was telling him you shouldn't go over and taunt them like that. And he t- and part of his response was, "It's fifty-fifty. They shouldn't be chanting, and he shouldn't be taunting." It just doesn't seem like there's a lot of support for black footballers in Italy. Mario Balotelli. Yeah, you guys probably heard of him. He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm very, I'm familiar with him. Yeah. So, um, you know, got in background. Uh, grew up in Italy. But yet he has to play amongst chants that say, you know, there's no such thing as a black Italian, you know? I mean, th- th- that happened with, with Yanis and um, the Greek, the Greek official yeah. who actually yeah. was racist. I mean, I, I just think, I feel like at this point, racism exists and it's in every sport. Like there's, there's NBA owners that are racist, NFL, and in every sport, these guys are racist, right? And I think for me, having um, black entrepreneurs saying, you know what? Now that I have pieces of pie, right? So I can censor you, right? I can censor what you're doing. And I think black people, as we get more money and more funding in our, in our community, that stuff will, will, will go down because they respect us more. So the reason why you rarely see certain things in papers against other cultures, right? But against black people, we're the, I guess, bottom of most people's totem pole because our community is that have the most wealth in it, right? So I think the more and more that our, I guess, entrepreneurs and more of us invest in the again we have, we're the ones who are fans of these sports we give them money we buy merchandise we go to games we buy tickets so we, we need to see more of people like us owning stuff and partnering and that's the positive outlet that i'm thinking about was that even though it exists right we can't fight every battle but it, it, it's a steady race right it's a, it's a steady battle and all our athletes even in hockey daddy like daddy you know when I mean, hockey happens too so all we can yeah. do is fight each battle day by day but we need more and more black entrepreneurs black owners taking charge and Occupying and you know spaces yeah and like our next our next for the culture is athletes in ownership we need more of it imagine how many black athletes we had in the 80s 90s that were making enough money but spent it on drugs girls like you know what i mean <laughs> and now it's true like, I think that Eastman had a, a documentary about it, about most athletes um, becoming bankrupt, Go broke. right? Clipping, broke, right? And I just think it's awesome to see now black athletes today. Serena Williams, her daughter, owns the team. Kevin Durant, part owner of MLS. James Harden, um, Mahomes this week, the Royals. Like, we're seeing athletes now investing in what, like, we as a people support. And so I'm hoping that this trend continues, right? If we can get more athletes putting their money and investing in the right in the right sport groups, sponsorships, clubs, even sport agents, like I would love to have more black sport agents, you know what I mean? To, to, to represent our culture and our people. Um, so I'm just hoping that this trend continues, you know what I mean? So like, what's your thoughts on like athletes and how they contribute to the sport and the responsibility as an athlete to contribute to our culture, not only protesting, but also promoting a positive outlet for people that come behind them next, right? 
So, so what's your thoughts on that? It's important. I think to Fahim's point, like, I would have a hard time being Jay-Z and supporting, um, like, I think you got to fix up your team in the way you deal with, <clears throat> in the way your players are treated, mm -hmm. um, in your team, and your organization. Uh, in the in the NBA, where um, the Clippers, old, uh, was it Donald Sterling? Right. When yeah. that thing happened, there's a certain energy you got to give to your team to before I can give you my support, my uh, resources um, mm -hmm. as, a, as a black man. But I do think it's important. I think Kevin Garnett uh, is also one of the, the people who are trying to yeah. buy yeah. into the, the, yeah. the, the Timberwolves, right? And I think it's important to get into ownership. I think it's important uh, to get some more black uh, GMs. Um, it's uh, this is such a broad, like, you know, in decision making when you look at like uh, Ontario's cabinet. Like, if you ever look Google that picture, it yeah. is all white and one. I think he's like a Sikh uh in this picture like these are the decision making positions for people who don't look like us and it's the same for basketball in a league that is whatever percent black they are i don't know i'm sure it's like what 90 90 something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um to not have owners who look like you is weird like it's really strange and and um i like that it kind of feels like it's going in the direction where the things are going to change. I'm not ex exactly sure what that's going to look like because we've never seen it before, but uh, it definitely feels like there's a window right now. And if we can find a way to, you know, navigate through that, it would be really cool to see some more like full owners in the NBA. Yeah. And to your point, I think people understand is that when it comes to these kind of sport leagues, the more people that look like us that are in those positions, the less crap that we tolerated. And because yeah. in those ownership meetings, they were all old white men that were during, you know, they were born, I mean, they're around the 50s, they hated MLK Jr. Like these guys weren't, not all of them, but a lot of them just were, they weren't about, about our movement. You know what I mean? So we have yeah. to also understand that these guys are from a different time and their mentality, like for example, Washington, football team. <laughs> Let's be real, right? Like, it took them how many years, like, to change their names? You know what I mean? And that's why we need more and more people of color in, 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 the, in the head office, presidents, GMs. Look at Masai. Doing an ex yeah. excellent job, okay? Yeah. Excellent. I think someone said, he, like, he's a top, like, GM. I was, they said it in the league. Like, he's amazing. Yeah. But why is he the only yeah. one? But but I also think to um, to your point about like athletes not getting involved in ownership, you know maybe this might be might not be the most popular thing to say, but I feel like you know it took the George Floyd's and the Ahmaud Aubrey situation for you know a different lens to be put on where they were like you know what we need to be bigger than our actual occupation and our platform right so it's like hey I play basketball. Um, but I also have millions of dollars. Let me try and enter that next tier, which is predominantly dominated by, you know, white folk. So now you start seeing a lot of these black athletes saying, you know what, I don't want to buy, you know, the latest off-white line. I want to get active into ownership and I want to talk to the people that uh, can put me in those lanes so I can kind of make impact that way. Because even if you look at, just to go super specific, if you look at the Serena Daughter um, Olympias deal with the mm -hmm. soccer team, um, I was listening to a podcast this week about that. And it's crazy that, you know, her parents were like, you know what, we're going to position you from like really small that when you mature and you identify with your interracial roots, you're already in an ownership position that, you know, if we're still in this place where we're struggling with like identifying with race and dealing with discrimination or whatnot, you're already financially set, right? So they're thinking long-term um, from that standpoint. So these are just things to think about. And it's, it's dope for me to see that these guys are looking beyond the kicks and the, the, 
the distressed genes. Um, they're getting yeah. into ownership and, and things of that nature. So, so. With yeah. Olympia, um, it's interesting that you just mentioned about uh, the reasoning behind it. It kind of makes me, reminds me of, um, so Nas did Stillmatic back in the day. And he made his daughter. Yeah, get the royalties. Yes, his daughter was the executive producer of that album. So every album that's sold, it's been funneled to, you know, she's getting, she's getting looked after on that and she's getting some, some credit on that, that album, you know? Um, also, even recently, I just, uh, DJ Khaled, he's made his, uh, his son yeah. an uh, uh, executive producer also, you know? Um, but I just want to um, mention, because we're talking about ownership, but NFL ownership is different than any other sport. Yeah, very different. It's, it's like old oil. What is it like a like oil money? I feel like all the NFL owners are all like from Texas or like. <laughs> but it's the only league that the owners have more power than the commissioner. Also, I think MLS too, right? Isn't MLS similar? No, I, I feel like MLS has similar type. Like the owners run everything because they get paid. Like, like garbage uh, MLS. Where he's 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 he runs everything. The NFL is the only league where the owners can pretty much say to the commissioner, you know, go we're by the commissioner, and when we're done, we'll tell you, let you know we decided. <laughs> you know, which is yeah. great. But um, since we're talking about, oh, sorry, were you gonna say something? No. Oh, okay. Um, I think there was. I was gonna say the NFL is the only league that there won't be any black owners i think there's one i think there's one owner that's brown in the there's nfl that's brown in nfl no, yeah so even so right now the only on. one i think when we talk about owners though in the nfl right as we present day there's two three there's three i can think of three black owners in the nfl right now that no one talks about owners not gms yes what, what teams what teams miami you know venus and serena they're minority owners of the dolphins right yeah and also i think jello too i remember she got got she got ownership as well i didn't know that yeah, yeah. yeah. last year know that either. So, and that's what i'm talking about when i'm talking about like in regards to being able to have influence because this is maybe going to switch maybe pivot the conversation a bit but so you have miami they have venus and serena they're minority owners the big excuse of why cap apparently can't get the job is because oh you know these big rich white owners well how you have venus and serena's minority owners and you can't within the organization get them to get it to the majority owners you know what i'm saying that kind of influence and there's another team actually um the falcons the atlanta falcons have um work done really he's a minority owner mm. I, I, I don't know the name of the know that. Their, their their main owner he owns like 90 percent and uh, work done has like he put together a partnership group, which I'm guessing he's maybe about two or three, like a small, but he's still an owner in the NFL. Okay. So think about that also. Like maybe this is just something that we just need to bring to light the fact that black people are making their way through the NFL. It's just they're not getting to a point of position and power to make that 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 change you know what i'm saying like imagine if atlanta would have taken someone like uh kaepernick like think about that like michael vick pretty much he is the franchise yeah. like no one bigger for that that team it was, it was well, a, well, well matt matt ryan is pretty i mean okay well he's uh, like he's uh, not obviously but like he's still well, like, a, a top qb like when you, of the two ryan or Michael Vick. Oh no, of course. Well, Michael Vick was the first yeah. black QB to do what he was doing. Yeah, like, I'm gonna say that like right now, Matt Ryan yeah, is like yeah, their Michael yeah. Vick. He's a black quarterback. Puts you pretty much on the map because they were on for no no one. Atlanta was nothing but a You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like 
I just don't see how you have minority. There's no use of having minority black owners if they're not going to have a chance to push the agenda and actually be able to do something with the power and the position they have. Maybe I that's mean, I disagree. I think it's a step in the right direction. Well, like, no. like you're asking for miracles right now. And I think, you know, it's all about taking steps before there was no black owners at all. So I think as we get more and more minority, who knows, once we get more and more minority, we might get a majority owner. But remember, to buy a franchise, which money you have to have, no one black has that money. Unless you're in Nigeria, you're oil chief, whatever. But in America, no one has NFL like ownership money. No one has that at this point. I think, I think- How much money are we talking? Pardon me? How much money are we talking? I mean, like you need like at least, I think, was it Ice Cubes? Someone's trying to someone was trying to get money to own a team, and they, Magic. Remember, Magic was trying to get money to own a, a team in the NBA, and he couldn't afford it. Like, no, Clippers. He wanted to buy the Clippers, and he couldn't afford the Clippers. You know what I'm saying? Like, to own a team in the NFL, you have to have a lot of money, and unfortunately, uh, oh, sorry, a couple billion. But I mean, I think Jay Z's wealth is one point something billion, not even two billion yet. You know what I mean? So you so like to buy a team right now for black people is, is unattainable, but it will happen eventually once we get more ownership. And who knows, if Durant and Harding, these guys make money off of MLS and they invest their money at, 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 and they join into a partnership after they retire, maybe they can afford one then. But I just feel that- But yes, it's not unattainable. It's, it can't, not, it's not well, unattainable. Like if, yes, in the future say, it's not, but I'm saying at this time, there's no one, like people have tried to do it, that but they haven't been able to do it like ice cube has been trying to raise money to have its own network like to get investors to invest money and buy stuff bill coffee was trying to buy i think nbc or abc and yeah. then he got charged like whatever we try to do stuff like this some, somehow a criminal or something happens in court right but all i'm saying is that it will happen i i think like we're gonna be patient with it um even though serena and venus and you know these owners aren't doing anything today doesn't mean that their influence will not start happening like slowly it, it will take time i think to start because even for me like in a business or a company the, the, the board members right and you vote on everything so if you're the only black people on a board you have to slowly convince people to be on your side and that takes time it won't happen overnight right they're the new kids on the block <laughs> essentially so i mean even though it won't change anything today i i do hope and i do believe with Goodell apologizing to Kaepernick, with them saying um, to, um, to Neil is, is fine. Yes, it took, you know, George Floyd, rest in peace for that to happen. But all I'm saying is that the NFL is moving in a positive direction as in other leagues. Like today, the NBA, everyone kneeled in the anthem. You know, last year, if you kneeled during the anthem, you'd be fined by the NBA. And this year, the NBA said you could kneel. Like every league is changing and adapting. I think we have to be patient and also have some compassion. Say, you know what? They came from here and now they're here. And slowly they're gonna move across. So we just have to kind of hold their hands and hopefully as fans be patient, but also challenge them when we can to make changes. Wasn't it wasn't it a couple of years ago that um the Panthers were up for sale? Yes. And Diddy yes. won and Diddy and Jay Z and they were trying. They were trying, but yeah. they wouldn't let them in. So exactly. I think that the, the couple, the couple billion, like whether it's two, three, four billion, to own a team, that's Jay Z, that's Dre, that's Diddy. Um, we didn't talk the about Wayne. Oprah. Yeah. We didn't talk about Beyonce. Uh, are the Kardashians? Happen. Are the Kardashians black yet? Are they like officially black now? No, they're not black. Sorry. Um, what are they? <laughs> they're, they're Middle Eastern. Not sure. They're, they're oh, Asian. Okay. They're, they're, yeah, they're not black. Okay. Yeah. I think they would beg to differ, but I think oh, there's that's enough. Kanye West, too. That's Kanye West. He's a billionaire. There you go. So, no, honestly, like, I, I'm hoping, again, I think a lot, like, since George Floyd, a lot has changed, and I'm hoping that we're going to see a lot of different, a lot of different things, and... I, in sports, I'm seeing it already happening now, so I can imagine where we'll be in a year from now. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, remember, it happened in June. But it's not like it's not, it's not end of July, like August. Like, I just feel like we have to be more patient. But I think the next time a team does go up, D. Coleman, I think 
a black owner will will get in because i think for marketing and for their brand nfl will want a black owner that's just my i have, I have the complete opposite take really I think, yeah i think that um it's like flavor of the month and i think it's a wave it's like this is the wave right now and i think people who have that much hate in them you know what it's like think about think about it racism like this you cannot like somebody right like as much as you hate someone never at any point have we tried to eliminate an entire race of people like think about how mad you would have to be at these people mm -hmm. to get rid of and enslave and rape and do all these things like to oppress an entire race of people you have this is from a different place it's not something that like yeah. goes away with you know us us protesting for a couple of weeks or a month or two months or three months or a full year of protesting is not going to change like what is actually in their heart and now like in their dna so i feel like it is nice that things are awareness is being made i love it um i hope that this opportunity continues but i can't see them reverting and, and changing into like a com entirely different person um forgetting their dna um they're not admitting things they're not this is history is not going to be changed in school systems they're not going to talk about what they actually did um the natives are not going to get what the natives should get like we're not well, There's actually, still certain things. Um, Oklahoma, half the state went back to the native, um, to the indigenous people. But I, I get what you're saying. Like, went back to them and did what though? Like, tell so, go and tell your kids what you did to them. Oh like, no, for and, sure, for sure. You know? And and that's what I'm saying. Like to me, it's not going to happen overnight. And I agree with you. It's, it's not going to change the NFL overnight. All I'm saying is that it's progress. That's all. We're moving in the right direction. And yeah, I think, I think it's a positive move. You're right. I think it's, it's a it's positive progress. Move. And, and all we can do is push and, and request more and more changes. Uh, I mean, a year ago, Fahim, remember you were kind of like, why is Jay-Z signing with, like, Rock Nation signing with NFL? Remember that? And yep. I mean, <laughs> and, and look at this year, Goodell saying Kaepernick was right, we were wrong. And I, and I, I, I believe Jay-Z was like, yo, Goodell, like a, Kaepernick is an apology, da, da, da. And I think... He can do those same things. But I, I think JC's strategy is like, you know what? I know that being from the outside, I can't make change. I can yell at you and tell you what to do, but you're not going to do nothing. So I'm going to invest in your, in your business. I'll partner with you, and then I can make change from within. And I think that's what we got to keep doing. And I think having black athletes in ownership, we can start making small changes and influences and getting more allies of other races on our side to help us make changes, right? Um, so my thing is that we need everyone, we need everyone fighting this battle in different places. We people from the inside, people from the outside, athletes, we need everyone on deck doing their piece to contribute as a whole. And I think we have people now going on the inside strategy, that's cool, but us as fans, our job is to still push, push them and challenge them when we see things that go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So I think every position matters. So when Goodell, when he apologized, was that before George Floyd or after George Floyd? After. 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 Right. So after, after, yeah. They, yeah, after so Floyd. Hold on. So we're not going to give Jay-Z the, 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 the cap on that one. Are no, we? I'm not giving – we, 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 before that, though, before no. that, all I'm saying, though, is that, like, it wasn't about what Jay-Z did. I'm saying that he wrote an actual press release saying that he was wrong about Kaepernick kneeling. And – Right. Look, to be fair, the NFL, I, I, I don't think they would have said that. I think they would have said, oh, we're starting to the black community. We apologize for what happened to George Floyd, and that's it. He actually said what Cap, like, we, like, they actually said what Cap did was right, and we were in the wrong for what we did. Jay and that's me, I'm saying, is something that Jay-Z probably influenced. That's my opinion. If Jay-Z was doing what you're saying, it shouldn't take George Floyd from the right that apology. One. True. Sure. Okay. Because um, we did we did the whole I can't breathe already. We right. did that last year. Yes. We yes. wore the t-shirts. Uh, we did that whole thing. So this right. wasn't a new this wasn't a new wave. This is just <laughs> right. it's been happening. Of the month. And also in regards to uh, 
all I've seen Jay and mind you that I know it sounds like I'm being negative toward Jay Z. Love Jay Z. I'm just saying. Let's keep it in context where the halftime show. Good halftime show. That's all you know but, though. That's all you saw. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> When we came and we had this discussion, you were saying these things that, you know, Jay-Z, Jay-Z, all, like, since Jay-Z, this partnership, I haven't really seen anything that I could say, it's Jay-Z. No, that, exactly, that you've so seen, that, so that you've I'm, seen. I'm still, that. Waiting, I'm still waiting to see what this partnership, um, what Jay-Z has to do with this Well, I mean, it, it just started, like, literally, right. what, eight months ago? Right. Nine months ago, not even? Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? But... All I'm saying is that Rock Nation, he owns it. And I don't know if Jay-Z is actually in the boardroom with the NFL. I'm not sure what, like, like, you know what I'm saying? But he is the person that owns the company, right? Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying, though, is that, like, I just think that there's people playing different positions right now mm -hmm. in, in different organizations that are doing their part. And I think, you know, each, each, each position, it matters. Inside, inside take and outside take. That's all I'm trying to say. Fair enough. Yeah. So um, the last segment, before we close it off, is, that's absurd. <laughs> that's absurd. <laughs> what we got on tap, what's on tap for that's absurd? That's absurd. Fahim, take it away, buddy. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to real quick, we'll go into Draymond's comment. Oh, Lord. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, man. Oh, Everyone should know Draymond's comment. Yeah. Um, oh, why does Canada's team care about Black Lives Matter? Uh, We're not in the same country. Why would we really, us? Guys, that was really embarrassing. <laughs> I wasn't super. Um, I wasn't super bothered by that. You weren't bothered by it. Well, no, I think that he's. Uh, if I remember correctly, he said, um, "What made you decide to do this when it doesn't?" necessarily directly impact your he said you guys are in a city. different country different country yeah like you said different country right right, right. right. and I, I wasn't super bothered because um in general yeah. i in general i think americans only know about america i don't think they're i don't think they're very aware like i know people my brother went to college with people who never left their borough in new york like they just they're from brooklyn they just never really went anywhere else they don't know about that mm -hmm. so i did think i did think that um it was a he was misinformed right. and it was a great opportunity for someone to educate him yeah. but i was more disappointed with masai's response to it mm -hmm. than i was draymond's stupid question like it was it wasn't a good question but I don't expect him to be like, I'm aware of uh, what happens in Toronto in socially. Like, uh, how would he know that? He isn't. So, I don't so even know. Question, so question for you, Darrell. Um, how many players on, our, on the Raptors are American? Uh, I think we only have one Canadian on the team, right? Oh, like, yeah, exactly. So what? even though I'm right, a lot of Amer I remember I had people in America ask me for living in the igloo. I get it. They're yeah, yeah, them, exactly. Don't know anything about? Exactly. But the igloo? this no, they asked that question. Like, so are you in the igloo? And I'm like, no, I'm in a house. Um, the question is that Draymond knows some of these players that grew up in the states, live in America. They're American. Our team is an American team, pretty much. That 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 resides in Canada. So I think. So yes, he wasn't. He doesn't know about America, but he kind of negated that the actual players are from his country. Know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're American. <laughs> so it's like him asking that question. It kind of he. It's like, and I think a lot of athletes in the NBA have the same thing. Like Lowry, now that you're playing in Canada, you're Canadian. Like it's like people are not mm. even understanding that these guys are also American. They also had cops stop them, and they grew up in America. Also had police brutality. Had friends die from cops. Like it affects black people because they're also American. So for me, I just felt it was ignorant because he kind of negated their, their, the, the, our, our own player's culture. He was like, oh, it doesn't affect you guys. You're Canadian. Well, I don't think he was saying yeah. it. But I think he was asking, why did you decide to do this out of all the teams when this wasn't like, I think he was more opening the opportunity for Maasai 
to say why you decided to do it, uh, giving the answer you just gave, and then also speaking to the social injustices in our city, in our country. But I don't think he was saying anything. I think he was just asking. Um, no, he, he, his, his question wasn't, his question was a statement question. He was like, like, I saw it and I was like, what's up with that? Like, the, like what would that affect you guys? <laughs> Like he was being yeah, kind of like, he was being kind of ignorant. Listen, when I look asking at a question phone, is saying, hey, hey, Raptors, I'm curious to know why you had a BLM on your bus, question mark. He right. was putting enough comments and sly, and sly like remarks about like, oh, like, you, like it doesn't affect you guys. Does, he said it doesn't affect you, so why do you care? That's what he said. So that means that he already had his own opinion about why we did it, but he wants to know our opinion on it. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't, it wasn't him trying to understand us. He was like, y'all are doing that for what? Like, you're extra. He was saying, you guys are extra for having this on your bus, and I don't understand. It makes no sense. Please tell me why you would do it. That was what he said in a, a nicer version. <laughs> I, think, I think you're being extra, and I think, <laughs> <laughs> I, think he simply, I think he simply said, so you guys put black lives matter on your bus and i think he said you guys were like one out of however many teams to do that um why did what made you decide to do that because it doesn't directly impact your whatever so i think he was that part is what i think bothered everybody right like him exactly him making the him making the decision that's right i i agree with what you're saying and i you know what i never thought of it I'm glad you actually brought that because I've never thought of it from that perspective. Um, and I'm with you in everything until he says um, it doesn't directly impact you. Doesn't directly impact that. Yeah. that like that's a thing because imagine. Um, so Black Lives Matter. It's it's um, against police brutality, right? Right. And police brutality is not just a US thing or Canadian thing. You had England, you know, all over the world. Australia, Every everywhere. France, like, you know what I'm saying? Like all over the world, they have studies that show black men are being profiled more. It's a universal thing, you know, uh, systemic racism from colonialism. Like this is something this is deeper. So just, for, I think that's the thing that, 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 that's a trigger part for me where he says it doesn't directly affect you because that means when he's watching, when the whole world is coming together um, for Black Lives Matter with George Floyd, he's sitting at home thinking, you know, not- Why, why are you asking, doing it? <laughs> the world is doing this because they're not American. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, and I agree. I think that is what he's thinking. I think he's thinking, like oh they're they're just with us they're not really going through this right. they're just like supporting us and i think it's nice of them but right. i think also even the people that i even the people that i think are the most socially aware and follow world news and they don't really speak to when they speak about the in, injustices in america they very rarely if if at all loop in canada and other parts of the world in those injustices i think americans are american to the core and uh they're not diverse in their thinking so they're not people they're not a people who's like yeah you know what in north america we're dealing with this in canada this mm -hmm. happened and let me let me reference what's been going on there in my That's argument true. they just yeah. talk about so george floyd happens and then we all protest I don't think that Draymond is looking. Well, first of all, it's Draymond. It's Draymond. So, <laughs> so how, yeah, like yeah, why cool. is our expectation even that high? I but agree. I think I do think that <laughs> for for us knowing what we're going through here, it's offensive that like you're making that decision for what's going on. You have no idea what's going on, obviously, but you ask the question and you should have been answered. And I don't like that part. Like I I think that everyone can be mad at like, oh, that's such a stupid question. But it's like you but can I think follow. It's how he asked it though. I, I think it's how he asked it. I, he he asked it in a very negative way. Like, I mean, viewers, we play what he asked. Like, I think the way he asked it, 
he put his own opinion in the question. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? But this, so, but this, I, but I feel this question and you're saying like, yo, like, like, I mean, why would you do that? Like, makes no sense to me. It wasn't like, hey, Masai, I, I want to understand, you know, I, I saw BLM and I was like, wow, that's really good. But I was curious why you guys had it on your bus. There's, there's ways to answer asking questions that aren't in like an ignorant way. And you know what Draymond is anyway. So like you said, it's, it, it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting how like, you know, how like in, if this is perceived, because like, I loved that he like brought up the fact that we were the only team to do it. Mm. I love the fact that yes. I think they even when they were doing it, they showed a picture of the bus for maybe some people who didn't actually get to see it. Yeah. Um, and then he asked what the way I took it was like, he asked me as a ignorant person to what's going on in Canada socially. Why did you guys do that? Like, mm -hmm. what made you decide to do that? Like, was it a solidarity thing? Was it a, um, you know, Messiah, you're African. So like, maybe this, it's you different i have no idea like i kind of felt like he was saying i don't know shit like i really just don't know what like why did you guys do it and i felt like that was for, uh, an opportunity for Masai to be like bro what are you talking about like there's americans on our team there are people from maybe but he Memphis knows that on like Draymond's team. aware of that that's why i'm just like Draymond. like this is so like you're not a child you're a grown man like this but maybe, very... <laughs> but that's journalism. Like Dan can speak to that too. Like you ask questions, you know the answer to. You need the answer, right? Like you need someone to say it. Like it's not for Draymond to go on there and be like, "Yo, I saw you guys put BLM on your bus. I know what's been going on with the kid out in um in in Whitby or Oshawa who got you know his eye beaten out." Like he's not going to speak to those things. I think as journalism, a part of that is like you asking the obvious. And saying, you know, I'm leading, I'm leading you into this. Like, uh -huh. give me the answer you want. But yeah. I, I do, I do understand why it bothered everybody. Like, yeah, I yeah. yeah, I get that. How about you, Danny? Oh, your, you on it? your opinion? No, I, I was trying to get in there a couple of times. I know, I see that. So that's not I just wait. I just wait till. Well, you wait, wait till the coach gives me spot <laughs> minutes, man. It's a, yeah, it's a tough crowd. You got to play your spot minutes and just see if you can earn, you know, more significant minutes down the line. Um, but uh, ideally, my perspective on it, really, uh, I'm kind of more on Janelle's side. Um, not that it's a side thing, but, like, if you rewatch the video, like, the way Draymond was asking that question was in a very antagonizing manner, as in to say, I'm already salty that you guys beat us in the finals. Um, and I'm going to use this opportunity to be super petty and be like, why did you guys do this? Like, nobody Just else in the league days. did it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I get the real side where it's like, right. hey, man, you know, like, he may genuinely want to know and he could be genuinely interested, but I don't receive it like that. I receive it as like, I'm still salty that you guys beat us. So <laughs> I'm going to try and embarrass you guys in this interview to be like why did you guys think that was cool like it wasn't cool like that that's the energy i got from it um Thank you. so that's 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 uh and i think a lot of people got it that way like if you see the clip on ig and watch the comments like yeah. a lot of people were interpreting like that but what i do like about darrell's opinion is it's fresh like i never looked at it like that either yeah me right? neither yeah that's right yeah, true um, you know, it's a very good point I and I, I, so. I think like most of us got triggered like fahim said we got triggered yeah. Because again, we beat them in the finals, so we knew that he was already yeah. hating on, on the Raptors, like you mentioned. That's what Draymond does. Yeah, like exactly. He's a, he's a, he's an into the antagonizer. He likes to yeah. make people get upset. And actually, to add on top of what Danny said, if you go on Draymond's Instagram, the amount of Toronto Raptor fans that have been like this clown faces. I mean, like like the fans of Toronto are, are pretty aggressive. Like they went in on his like guys. Go on his Instagram. Go on his last picture. Yo, the Raptor fans went on. Like, it was, he, he got harassed. So, like, he literally, I think in the future, he won't, I mean, he might, because it's Draymond, like you mentioned, Darrell, right? But, yeah. um, <laughs> I think that's Draymond. It doesn't, but. it doesn't help that he's, like, one of the pettiest guys in the league, right? Like, yeah. he's, right. To, for, this, for this to even cross our minds, like, it's Draymond. So, I think, yeah, sure. Like, a part of us is going to be, like, there's got to be something else here. Like, there's no way he just 
ask that question so simply, right. but right. I still I still think while we go in on Draymond, we should also be going in on Masai. Okay, so why Masai? I mean, so what? Yeah, what I, I what, what, what Masai either. said made you feel that what he said was absurd? Uh, he didn't say anything. Response, by the way, <laughs> he, he didn't say much. So like he he spoke to um, I think more to the solidarity than he did speaking to what specifically Toronto has been dealing with and uh, our own protesting here for our own reasons. And I'm not saying that he needs to be the most educated socially on Toronto um, injustices, but I do think that he had the opportunity to say like, this is not a US thing, sir. Like this is, you're very misinformed if you think black lives only exist in US. Like yeah. black lives matter everywhere that they are. So I think he just had the opportunity to kind of speak to globally, you know, mm -hmm. we're the we're the international team. We're like the you know, the outsiders. And I think because there's so much shade thrown our way, um, with everything, like we talked about media coverage and and things like that, we're we're touchy when it comes to this kind of thing. Like why are you excluding us? Why don't Black Lives Matter in Toronto? Why don't Black Lives Matter in Canada? Why don't they matter in the UK? So I think he just had the opportunity to kind of speak to uh, Black Lives Matter is not something you're going to own, uh, United States. Like, you don't get to own this. This is literally a global movement. So um, I just feel like he, he dropped the ball. Masai's so good that we don't ever want to come for him. Like, we never yeah. want to get at Masai for anything because he's, he's the best. But I, I do think this time he could have spoken up a little bit more um, just on that. You know, I agree. Yeah. I, I didn't see that take, but I, I, I agree. I, I like, I can see that where you're coming from. But uh, you have to look at the circumstance. I think Masai, I, I actually don't think, I can't remember. I, should, I don't think he really directly answered the question. Nope. Yeah. I mean? So, nope. I mean, and I, when I heard that and I acknowledged he didn't answer it, I think I understand why, you know, like he wasn't there for that, you know? It seems like he was there. He had, he went in there with an agenda of what he wanted to accomplish. Yeah. He went in there. He kind of maybe even, if he even thanked Draymond uh, for, you know, like he was very gracious, very, it was a very political, like, you know, very political answer. Um, and I, I really think, you know what, if Masai went in um, with an agenda and he's not going to allow Draymond's question to throw him off of what he wants to but you are right though you are right in what you say about Masai Masai um especially this is coming from someone who once stood up and said F Brooklyn remember right yes I was there actually I was in the um the, the Raptor yeah. square when that happened yeah. that is, <laughs> no that was very much a like you know like uh, George Bush does not like black people move like yeah you know what I'm saying yep so like it's not like Masai is afraid to but I think Masai at that time he he seen past it and he just said, okay, I'm, I'm here for something else, you know? And yeah, he did. He was safe. Johnny? Yeah. Sorry. No, I think my perspective on Masai, I, I've never seen his response. Uh, all the viral clips I saw was just <laughs> on asking, right? And then the video cut, which is classic <laughs> internet culture. Like when you look at internet culture, that's, that's, spot on like sure. let's just show Draymond and let's not show anything that Masai said um, <laughs> but in all seriousness I think um, you know just looking back at what Draymond asked um, if I put myself in Masai's situation it's almost like Draymond does a great job of trying to bait you right like he yeah. wants to bait you into something yes. and I felt again I feel very strongly about this because Draymond is like the petty warrior Right. Um, no pun intended. He's looking for an opportunity to be like, hey, let me see if I could bait Masai into saying something or like, you know, um, really being reactive when he doesn't need to on national television. And I think that's why <laughs> Masai really played it safe. I, I do think very low key, he was shook. Like he was kind of like, oh my gosh, like Draymond, you're really trying to call me out here. Because we've all been in those scenarios where it's like, we would be with your boys and you're like, yo, why are you asking me this in front of like everyone else? Like, you can <laughs> just WhatsApp me or whatever, you know? So like, it was one of those scenarios. Um, but again, I never saw the clip. So I don't know. To me, it just sounds very, uh, very baity. Like he's trying to bait him into something. 
Yeah. Like I can't, I can't even remember what he said. I think it was like just general. Um, yeah, it was political. Like I was trying to just like not answer it, but not also. He's like, you know what, Dre? I'm gonna just say this and move on because yeah, because you know what? I mean, if he did entertain the pettiness, it it would have been a back and forth thing for a while. And that was, right. And then that would have made headlines. Yes. And then right. and Draymond, like you said, baiting, he would have dragged Kawhi, I mean, he would have dragged Masai into a, a situation that he didn't want to be in also, right? So yeah. right. a little bit of chess going on. Masai, Never seen it, but I think Masai played it smarter. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, well, you were just in the zone. Thanks, everyone, for entering, for staying in the zone. <laughs> Uh, we definitely had some laughs, some very good insight on things that were trending this week. Um, and I mean, so before we wrap it up, we always like to give our guests a shout out moment. So you guys can shout out anyone, anything you want. Yeah. Um, so who wants to go first? <laughs> um, I'll just get some plugs off. Uh, yeah. I'm not really big on social media, but uh, follow my sister. She's a social media influencer. Um, Aquila Farrell, that's A-Q-U-I-L-A-F-A-R-R-E-L-L. So follow her. She's got like over 10,000 followers. She's just killing it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my plug, man. Shout out to the sibling gang for the culture. Nice. So that's all I got. Excellent. I want to I shout out my wife for letting me come on here tonight. And uh, <laughs> Yes, thank you, Trey. <laughs> I, normally, I normally put uh, my son to bed. Oh. So she held it down tonight with both of the kids. Oh, so uh, during this entire podcast, I was listening for like little footsteps to see if he was going to find me, but she did her thing. So I want to shout her out. Shout out the Boot Cut Podcast. Um, yeah, check and us out too. TK. Yeah, yeah. And shout out you guys, man. This is a year. This is big for you. Uh, I thought I was going to see you guys like pop a bottle or pour, pour a glass or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I know, right? Doing shots. Yeah, we should have. I mean, I, have, I mean, I could go right now, but nah, do, do it after. <laughs> um, but I want to shout out um, to, oh my gosh, what's my plug today? I want to shout out just actually to Fahim, Jomo, the Zone, po- the Zone in Podcast team. Um, it's been one year, you know, trying to figure out our mojo, and I think we're in full stride. So definitely thank everyone for the support. Our subscribers, we're actually going to have some prizes based off of this episode. So make sure you watch it. I will post uh, some questions for you to answer based on what our guest said to get a prize. All right. And also, yeah, also shout out to the Malik B. Yeah. Oh, then that was just, that was my shout out. But oh, yeah. sorry for him. No, that's fine. Go ahead. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roots first album, do you want, or actually second, or Organic's first one, but do you want more Roots album? Um, you know, so with the roots, it's like, you know, there's uh, early roots, and then there's like, you know, uh, what's it, Erica Badu, um, uh, where you got me that that song, and then that's yeah. commercial, and and then after you know many years, and we talk Fallon, you know, like they evolved. Um, Malik B was like an early founding member of the legendary Roots crew, and. Um, so I say that yeah, rest in peace because he um, he really left his mark. A lot of people, when they hear of the roots, maybe uh, along the way, uh, maybe started listening to the roots after uh, he no longer have been part of them. So if anyone's listening and you're not familiar with Malik B, uh, check out the early stuff. Uh, rest in peace to Malik B. Awesome. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for entering the zone. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Okay, subscribe, like this video, so you can be notified on any of our next prizes coming out or our episodes as well. Yeah. And uh, be sure to comment, share, uh, share your thoughts on the socials that we put tags on there. All right, guys. Zoned in podcast. We out. Peace.